Do you want to just describe your idea from scratch again? So, for the oh, looking for transits of planets in front of white dwarfs. Where, uh, if, you, if you see a transit, it's something you. It's like a, a moon in front of the sun. Yeah. It's sort of like a total or partial eclipse of the sun. So the light is changing by a big amount. And, it's quite different from the normal transits of normal stars, which are just a, one part in 10,000 of the light. Yeah. So it's far better. For, if you're an amateur looking from the ground, you can see these things easily. The other thing is, if, you're, if the planet is at a distance from the star, just like the Earth from the sun in proportion, yeah. it means that the year is only a few hours. So planet is going around every hour, every six So you'd see it more often. Hours. You see it far more often. And so you could only need to look for a couple of nights and either you see it or you don't. Yeah. And so you could actually search a hundred white dwarfs a year or something like that. And uh, so the white dwarf size relative to the planet size, uh, could it be a full eclipsing type uh, transit, you think then? Yes. Or? It could either be a total eclipse or a partial eclipse or an annual eclipse. But it would be a much more dramatic transition. And it's much faster, of course, than a normal transit. It's all over in a couple of minutes. So and why is this good for amateurs? Why, why aren't the pros looking for this? Why would because it? they don't have enough time. And, and these white dwarfs are all over the sky. So you can't look at a lot of them at the same time with a big telescope. Okay. You have, you have to deal with them one at a time. So. It, means you need one telescope for a couple of nights to, to, to look for one at one white dwarf. That's something that professionals can't do. Yeah. There's just, there's, there aren't enough big telescopes, but there are enough little telescopes in the hands of amateurs. So yeah. So what's the magnitude delta that you'd be looking for on a white dwarf transit? What What's the lower limit that you'd have to resolve? Well, it would be a, a depending on whether it's total or partial. Of course, if it's total, then the thing goes, essentially it disappears for a minute or two, or two and, and it comes up So again. it's 100 percent. It yeah. could be 100 percent, it could be 25 percent. But anyway, I mean, a, a magnitude would be sort of reasonable. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's not a, a thousandth of a magnitude as it is with a normal yeah. sunset. So what else can amateurs do? Could we find uh, Dyson spheres anywhere? No. no? <laughs> No, there are lots of good things you can do, but the other thing that you can do, of course, if you're looking at white dwarfs anyway, looking for rapid pulsations and, and all that sort of normal things like sunspots uh, are likely to occur on white dwarfs much faster. So, so a typical time scale for sunspot is say a month on, on a white dwarf it would be probably a couple of hours. Really? Wow. And and that would show up as just a, a variation in the magnitude, intensity, luminosity? Yes, or I mean or color or it could be all sorts of interesting things could be happening which nobody is looking at. Yeah. And uh, you could also detect moons then through a white dwarf? Oh yes. The, the background light from the star is just so much less. Yeah. So uh, anything concerning planets is much more visible. Yeah. Well, I think amateurs would love to come up with ideas that they can do that the pros can't do. I mean, you know, they've kind of the pros have taken over the uh, asteroid hunting and everything else like that. But what other areas are fertile for amateur discovery of good science? Yes, I don't know what uh, what amateurs are doing. I'm not myself an amateur in the sense that I don't have a, t a telescope and I don't do observing. So I really don't know what people are already doing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you can certainly the, the standard things amateurs do is hunting for comets. Which, yeah. Which is, yeah. Which is very good. Yeah. Very good at and and. Uh, 
yeah. micro lensing. There's a good, I know there's a good collaboration in New Zealand where amateurs and professionals work together looking at micro lensing. Yeah. And that's um, yeah. That's something which is really extreme, extreme interest scientifically to yeah. looking at. Well, any other words of wisdom for amateur scientists before I... No, I think no, no wisdom here. <laughs>